Hey, Retcon Raider here, with special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracith, Eerie V23, Egg, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatlabe, James Tremier, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piedkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to the Alpha for Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader. As today, we continue exploring the upper levels of Footfall Station. And uh, I will say, I'm kind of surprised at just how sprawling these urban environments are. It's, it's almost kind of overwhelming, but, but I do very much appreciate how densely packed they are with things to do or see. Even if a lot of it is just loot or random background chatter. It's nice to have the player's explorations rewarded with things like bits and bobs of lore or, or various vendor trash. Not to mention the occasional puzzle or secret quest, of course. That said, I'm still pretty much just wandering aimlessly. Seeing the sights, trying to track down new quests. So we'll see where that takes us. Oh, and uh, as a side note, I also found the hotkey that brings up our cargo manifest, which helpfully tracks all of the cargo sets we're currently building. There's also a key to bring up the colony management interface, but we can't actually do anything with that just yet. I'm assuming because we haven't actually secured any of our colonies just yet. Huh. I am not sure if that's an area we're actually supposed to be able to get to or not. Victory awaits. There's something suspicious about those folks on that catwalk. I just can't seem to figure out what it might be. Hey, Reverend DeRoso. Your Holiness, Reverend Hieronymus, I've been authorized to deliver an anonymous donation to you. Well, good for you. Machine right set. A set of sacred oils and contidograms that can appease the keeper of any technology. Neat. And then we also got another few percentiles of a cargo set. I believe that one's worth about 200 reputation. The man with the face so drawn it appears to be made of nothing but skin and bone fixes his unblinking, bird-like eyes on you. The priest's simple black clothes have next to no adornments, and they do nothing to mask his unhealthy gauntness. In a cracked voice, he says, The Emperor protects my son. We'll try to be careful with how we talk to this guy. We already know who he is. We're not going to insult him by pretending we don't. The Emperor protects father. But he protects only those who are pure of heart. Do you think yourself one of them, my son? And you must be the Unvon Valencius. That name carries weight, and it is a burdensome one, for its reputation suggests that Theodora encumbered it with many a sin. I wonder, will you seek to shed them, or will you carry them onward, picking them along the way like ripe fruit, and savoring their sweet poison? Uh, well, you know me, I... I put my faith in the Emperor. Seems like a cool enough dude. He gives you a scrutinizing look, then his tone softens. 
Well, then be twice as diligent, for this sector will seize any chance to test your faith. He looks at Argenta, who's standing nearby, and his voice softens slightly. Greetings, sister. I congratulate you on your return. Was your pilgrimage fruitful? It was, Reverend. Let it be known to you that Theodora von Valancius' ship was attacked by servants of archenemy, who appall the hearts of any righteous soul, she says, nearly hissing with fury. And not all of them met a fitting end. Some fled. And more than that, their blasphemous words clearly pointed to this attack being part of a larger design. Reverend Hieronymus, I wish to join the esteemed rogue trader's crew and help protect the Von Valancius dynasty from the forces of chaos. I therefore ask you to relieve me of my duties as a guardian of the Footfall Reliquary. Argenta humbly bows her head, but her shoulders are tense. Uh, yeah, yeah, I second this. Sister Argenta stood by my side during the assault on the ship. I'd be honored to have her. Hieronymus nods in thought. I cannot oppose the will of a righteous heart that wishes to bring its wrath upon the servants of Arch Enemy. Follow the call of your soul, sister. The footfall reliquary will be preserved even without your contribution, as it was in all the years preceding your arrival. Hieronymus smiles sadly. I know what it is that calls you to follow the rogue traitor, Sister Argenta. You seek combat, for it helps you to forget how hollow and worthless our lives truly are. It offers the illusion of meaning. Perhaps you will relinquish this illusion one day, or perhaps you will die before that day comes. Regardless, I wish you luck on your new path. But before you start on a path toward your new destiny, I have a request to make of you and your companion. Many among my flock are from the poorest, most dispossessed people on Footfall. They brought me troubling news from Footfall's shadow quarters. In the darkest corners where the Liege's guards do not venture, taint has taken root. Gross. Footfall is consumed by sin. But even here, true heresy, serving the archenemy, is a rarity. The cultists who now dwell in the Shadow Quarters mark their abodes with a sun, inscribed in blue and gold, and perform strange rituals in secret. The weak find solace in believing these reports to be rumors, but I well know that evil lurks all around us, and I wish to see retribution. Why don't you take this to the uh, local liege lord? I do not walk the paths pleasing to the liege. Hieronymus frowns. The dame is weak and riddled with worms on the inside. He seeks to please his Caspalika masters, those peddlers of relics of the unholy Xenos. Yeah, I have uh, seemed to have run across a truly shocking amount of heresy as of late. Indeed, my son, dark times are upon us, and sinners grow ever more eager to embrace heresy. Both on footfall and elsewhere, its foul buds are coming into bloom. Troubling news is arriving from many planets. There are whispers of wicked things taking place on Kiava Gamma. And just recently, a transport ship by the name of Navica teeming with refugees arrived on footfall from Winter Scale's realm. Their world was stricken with blasphemous sedition, and such was its severity that they had to flee to save themselves. Which sounds like another quest hook. Navica. We'll make a note of that. Oh. A uh, note is now redundant, because apparently it was added to our journal. Once again, rewarding us for talking to random people. The Liege refused to accept them, and so they headed for Foulstone, 
a desolate cloister of the righteous. It was wise of them not to linger in this den of sin. Yes, because Foulstone sounds so much better. But yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll look into this. With great pleasure, Argenta puts her hand on the stock of her weapon. I almost wish for the rumor to be true. My heart yearns to battle some heretics. This is where I bid you goodbye, sister. Noble rogue trader. Is there more you wish to ask me about? Sure, why not? So if uh, footfall's really so bad, why are you here? What am I doing in this den of blasphemers, pagans, and the vilest souls, you mean to say? Well, footfall is the first and last stop in the Coronas Expanse. It is the point of arrival for those who have just started on their path. And it is also where those who are reaching its very end return, their souls wounded and bleeding. I embrace both the former and the latter, so that they may cast an honest eye over their sins. Furthermore, rumors from across the entire sector amass in footfall. If I hear crewmen whispering about a reclaimed shrine world or expressing desire to carry the Emperor's light into the darkness among the stars, I help my flock in their sacred duty. Devoted trailblazers need assistance both spiritual and material. Tools, equipment, even garments and simple everyday items. Anything that might help pilgrims on their long journey and during the first days of the harsh frontier life is worth its weight in gold to us. May any help you offer to the effort of gathering such things be blessed. I bear another, darker duty. The expanse is filled with the tainted creations of unholy heretics. These insidious objects are a danger to the soul, but I know what to do with them. Should you, on your travels, come upon dangerous, corrupted objects, bring them to me, and the reward for your vigilance will be even more generous. The Drusian mission has much to share with the rogue trader. Ah, I see. So much like Opticon 22... Hieronymus Deloroso here is another faction vendor, but in this case, I guess, representing the Church of Man, the, uh, the loyal zealots of the Imperium. Yeah, let's have a look at what he's got. Disciples Boots, interesting. Plus five on Lore Imperium. Assorted expendable items, mobile extractiums, which apparently you do install on planets you control. We just don't control any planets yet. And a thunder hammer, which continues the trend of lower damage with higher penetration. Though I believe that's the biggest area strike yet. That's appealing, especially in conjunction with that stun effect. And then, of course, we also have the higher-end stuff, but honestly, given that this is just an incomplete alpha, I have a hard time believing we'll actually bump our reputation with any faction high enough to actually get any of that stuff. From what I've been told, they've actually dropped us right into Act 2 of the game, so we're a good ways in, only without all the reputation and equipment and whatnot that we might have normally otherwise picked up during the prologue in Act 1. So, building reputation is largely just based on the quests we do now, plus whatever cargo sets we can build. Minus all of the uh, rep we might have otherwise built up during those earlier portions of the game. Alright, let's uh, finish chatting with Hieronymus here. The Emperor protects my son. Sure, sure. Uh, hey, you mind if I ask you about the faith? My sermon planted the seed of faith in the heart of another rogue trader once. Incendia Corda. Perhaps you are destined to become my second fledgling. Yeah, yeah, that's a possibility. So tell me about the Emperor. You think it is so easy to put into words his essence and splendor? The Emperor is the perfect deity that reads our hearts and grants us his light. 
He led humanity out of darkness and horror. He created our great home. He experienced torment and pain, which only made him stronger. That is a lesson to us all. Purity is not to be found at the bottom of the dirtiest hive, or in golden palaces, but only among the ranks of those who suffer. Argenta silently makes the sign of the Aquila, her bright eyes burning with unyielding flame. So how does one go about worshipping this emperor? Pray to him, destroy his enemies, and touch not their poisoned gifts. Cast aside all doubt and be vigilant against the weak souls beside you. When you see a sign of taint, burn it away without pity. Pain is good. It tears the crust of vileness from one soul. And remember that if you see no sin in you or around you, then you are not being diligent enough in your search, or you are being too lenient on yourself, averting your eyes from the truth. Tell me about the uh, Emperor's servants. Ah, you speak of the Adeptus Ministorum? Well, these heralds of his word hold great power. Every priest, myself included, is part of its hierarchy, and the Ecclesiarchy possesses the unique right to judge what is virtuous and what is malign. The Adeptus Ministorum prays and cares for the temples. It sends missions such as my own to every corner of the realm of humanity. It fights against heresies. Uh, may the Emperor bless his faithful servants, because I'm certainly not saying that other thing. You think that his mercy extends that far? I have seen many who wish to be our shepherds. Power clouds their vision, and their greedy hands scoop up all that they can reach. The Ecclesiarchy is long overdue for a cleansing. You know, those words are uh, awful close to heresy. And yet many others would find them truthful. I am a preacher of a radical teaching that renounces fear. I've left the bounds of the Blessed Imperium to carry his light into the darkness of the frontier. I've come to know sin firsthand, and am now able to perceive it under any guise. I think I can afford myself a modicum of truth. Fair enough. Also, I think I'm starting to get a good idea of why you were assigned to this particular location far, far away from the center of the Imperium. So tell me about the enemy. It has three faces. The inhuman Xenos who wish death upon us simply because they are unlike us. The pitiful subhuman mutants, abominations that wish death upon us because they envy us and are ashamed of themselves. And the arch enemy. The chaos that reigns in the Immaterium, which wishes death upon us by its very nature. Adira starts giggling at Hieronymus' words. He forgot to mention people like me. My whole life people have told me I'm filth on the face of humanity. It's poison. It's bane. She sobs, then sneers. All of them pious dogs can go to the void. I serve House Von Valencius, not your emperor. And it suits me just fine. Uh, thank you, Adira. Probably not the best time to vent that, but um, I get it. So, uh, you mentioned Incendia Corda, right? Have you heard of Aspis Corda? Pirate, blasphemer, xenophile, and egregious sinner? Incendia is her heir, and a rarity among rogue traders. The protection of the Holy Warrant typically leads to the swift atrophy of conscience and godly fear. But not in Incendia's case. She relentlessly hunts down pirates and firebrands and brings rebelling colonies to repentance, establishing strict discipline. The weight of her wrath is great indeed. The colonies she punishes are girded with orbital rings of heretic corpses as a warning to the survivors. As her personal confessor and guide, I find no end to the joy her triumphs in faith. Bring me. Yes, um, I too enjoy 
Mass murder. Careful now. So, uh, right, yeah, you uh, seem to have found yourself a great patroness, and you seem very, very eager to spread word of her exploits. He chuckles. What good are her riches to us? Faith gives us all we need, even though I just asked you to help us with other things. It is she who is indebted to us. It was a Drusian expedition that discovered the cryo vault in which Aspis had imprisoned her. If it hadn't been for us, she would be resting there still, in her frozen slumber. Got it. Well, thank you. This has been uh, very enlightening. Think nothing of it, my son. How about you, father? Can I ask about you? Neither my past nor my present hold any secrets. But take heed when gazing into my heart. For many dark thoughts lurk within. Really? What kind of dark thoughts? Bad omens. Dark times have come. Ships from the Imperium barely appear in the Coronis Expanse anymore. In Footfall's shadow quarters, Taint thrives, and the people here are corrupt enough to succumb to it, gladly. Rumors around the Expanse say that the accursed Xenos have grown bold and are rearing their heads. They attack ships and settlements, walk under the suns of Imperial worlds like kings, instead of cowering in the shadows. What next? What adversities await us if such disgrace is happening already? He shakes his head sternly. There's more and more talk of how poorly things are going in the Coronis. Some days it seems I can't take two steps without hearing some peasant pontificating on the matter. <laughs> Even if it is as dire as they say, the Von Valencius realm will not crumble under the blows of fate, no matter how devastating. Chin up, Lord Captain. This is no time to lose heart and lament your lot. Why, thank you, Abelard. You, uh, you sound slightly different, but maybe I'm just imagining it. Well, anyway. Not only is your hope false, it is also dangerous. Among his servants, there have been people of greater integrity who sullied themselves in their attempts to rise above the rest. How about you, Reverend Hieronymus? Where do you fit into all this? Yes, I am Reverend Hieronymus. Hieronymus Doloroso, as I'm called. Head of the Drusian mission, and possibly the last hope for the wayward souls that inhabit this fringe, forsaken by our master. And who are the Drusians? We are a sanctioned imperial cult which honors Saint Drusus, Scourge of the Bale Childer, Bane of Xenos. Just as he once fearlessly ventured into the Calixis Sector and spearheaded its conquest, so do we travel to untamed reaches and expand the Imperium's borders. We are pilgrims and scouts who descend into the darkness of lawless sectors, and our eyes are inured to vice and filth. Just as St. Drusus found his martyr's death and was reborn in faith, so do we search for the purifying power of trials and suffering. From the folds of his black robe, he produces a thin pamphlet. Read this. It contains the basics of our dogma. Perhaps you, too, will sense the truth in St. Drusus' words. Yes, I will totally read this later, but maybe you could give me a quick rundown? He was a great saint, irrepressible and decisive. Drusus served the Emperor as a simple member of the Guard. He fought in the glorious St. Jevon Crusade and rose to the rank of General. It was a grueling conquest. The Imperium invaded the Calixus Sector, back then a savage expanse populated by Xenos and heretics. Drusus delivered many defeats unto the enemies of humanity. He brought down the Twisted Kings on Acreage, liberated the planet Drea from the unholy Dark Daemons, and had many triumphs. But then they encountered a race of unholy Xenos whose planets were known as the Hell Worlds. Rivers of blood flowed, Golgena Angevin died in his headquarters, 
The crusade was about to crumble. But then, we received unexpected help from a foe. The Xenos sent their assassins to the great Drusus, but his will shielded his servant from the attack. Slain but resurrected through a miracle, Drusus asserted himself at the head of the Angevin Crusade as its Lord Militant, and saw the Xeno's extermination through to the end. He brought the Calixis Sector to accord, and was proclaimed a living saint. Funny, the story of St. Drusus Huno is completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, funny how that works. But uh, probably not something we should bring up with this guy. Especially not with uh, Sister Argenta right here. Hieronymus is looking past you, absorbed in his own story. Oh, good. Hey, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what did you do before you joined the faith? I was a wretched sinner. Blinded by my ambitions, I served in my home planet's Adeptus Administratum division. I was a shrewd and sly bureaucrat, and I soared to great heights, to the very chair of Prefect. In thirty years, I turned my home from a withered fringe colony into a prosperous world. Our wealth grew as we bloomed. But the bloom was a veneer for rot. Opulence had depraved us, and luxury had seduced us with its sordid promises. The planet's Zenizens no longer wished to pray or work. They only sought entertainment and dangerous philosophies. A thousand vile heresies and a million sinful voices bred on my world like mold on a nutribar. Yeah, that's rough. In those days, I saw with my own eyes the shameless ugliness of sin. I repented of my hubris, left the position of prefect, and became a traveling missionary. I have been one ever since. As for my world, twenty years ago, the Holy Inquisition consigned it to purifying flames. Well, I've got to say, it sure was nice of the Emperor to give you a second chance. Who said I had redeemed myself? I doomed an entire planet to degeneracy. You think a decade or two of wandering with a mission is enough to atone for that? No, I am a poor excuse for a shepherd in his eyes. Your words about the past are drowned in murky hues of sickly green, and your talk of the present falls in gray flakes of ash upon the shoulders of your listeners. Sorrow truly weighs heavily on you, Reverend Hieronymus, and that is why the fire in your words is devoid of golden radiance. The faded flickers of your teachings leave nothing but black soot on their souls. That's bleak. Uh, no more questions. I am surprised that you had any to begin with. Right. Well, I should probably get going. The Emperor protect you, my son. And you as well. He seems fun. But I suppose there's a lot of that sort of thing going around, given the nature of the Empire and the Imperium of Man. Come on, Cassie. Look at them because of their rotten colored souls. That's nice. In this mishmash of devices and cables, you notice equipment from totally different eras. Some ancient, some merely old, and others hastily tossed together in more recent years. Who left all these corpses here? Aha! Yet more hidden treasures, just waiting to be claimed. Why is my dialogue box getting stuck like that? 
Also, I am starting to think we might actually have a quest at some point to collect all these leaflets. You know, get them out of circulation. So maybe it's a good thing we're collecting them all now. Uh, hi. The low hum of voices quiets, and a dozen gazes shift to you. First Mate Dagon. The tall man with a shaved head is rubbing his hands together nervously. His opulent clothes are nearly bursting at the seams on his muscular body, and his expression is forbiddingly grim. Still, he's trying to put on an air of friendliness. Greetings, you must be... He glances at the scroll in his mechanical hand implant. Uh, Master Fidelio? All the guests have arrived, you're the last on the list. And we couldn't well start without you. Your presence is absolutely vital. Is it now? Uh, yes, of course, that's me. Master Fidelio. Yep. He puts on a broad smile, but then catches himself and quickly frowns once more. Uh, please, <clears throat> we can talk later. A chaplain is about to begin. What is this tomfoolery? Abelard grumbles, but not before making sure that the man is out of earshot. I'm not sure yet, but it must be something, because they wouldn't have put this much effort into nothing. The gathering you found yourself at seems refined and respectable at first glance. The decorations and the attendees' clothes speak of wealth, and so does the location, which isn't far from the Leech's residence. But you notice that most of those gathered are of rather imposing physique. Many of them have scars and military-grade implants. Several of the guests look like they are covering the exit. A few are clearly carrying concealed weapons. Your appearance has definitely attracted everyone's attention. Just about every guest here keeps glancing at you, and some are clearly watching your every move, even though they're trying not to show it. I wonder who this Fidelio guy is, and why they couldn't start without them. Judging by the way that fellow with the list was talking about him, it's someone very important. But it's not a name I've heard before. I've never heard this name either. So what do you guys make of all this? Any thoughts? I know nothing about this place, but I can feel that something's in the works here. I sense danger and opportunity. And the danger's a whole lot greater, she finishes grimly. All right, let's, uh, let's see how this plays out. Wait a minute, are we... Are we crashing some poor guy's funeral? This is unfortunate. Oh, what a terrible, sorrowful day! We pay our respects to the life and soul of Footfall Society. A loyal servant of the Imperium. A generous benefactor who spared no expense to keep the fire of faith burning. And an example to all future generations. The most noble and unforgettable Master Bellardo. This loss. The fussy administratum clerk speaks in a strained voice and keeps peeking at a paper with text on it. His speech drags on and on, blending into a monotonous cascade of praises of the late Master Bellardo. So let us offer a prayer to the Emperor for the repose of Master Bellardo's soul and the prosperity of his heirs. I now pass you over to our most reverend chaplain. Well, this is awkward. A formidable looking man dressed in the attire of an ecclesiarchy missionary glares at the gathered crowd. And here you all are, you vultures. Let's offer a prayer then. But if you think that the emperor or the messenger of his will, in other words, myself, does not see into your vile souls, you are sorely mistaken. Chaplin looks at you and gives a slight nod. I wasn't referring to Master Fidelio. At least Denz himself wanted to see him at his funeral. But the rest? I know every one of you, and I would be astonished to discover anyone here 
who truly mourns this loss. So go ahead, pray for Bellardo's soul. Soon the flames will take him, a fitting end for a life like his. May the Emperor keep his soul. Without another word, Chaplin makes the sign of the Aquila and pointedly turns away from the attendees. And we seem to have been left to our own devices, so... I guess we will investigate. Expensive Amasek, prepared for the attendees. Neat. I don't know what that is. I assume some sort of alcoholic beverage. Cass Bellardo. Heir to the deceased, I imagine. You're Fidelio, aren't you? You aren't in a hurry by any chance, eh? That's certainly not a suspicious question to ask. Whoever prepared the body of the gray-haired man lying in the coffin, they did a good job. Even in death, he looks majestic. Abelard maintains a grave expression befitting the occasion. Until he sees the face of the deceased, he frowns, he peers at it with suspicion. Then he gasps, astonished, almost dazed. I'll be. This is quite the meeting, if it can be called such, under the circumstances. Okay, I am intrigued. The implants left in the deceased's body speak of his high standing. Expensive tech is typically extracted from the dead, and only the most prominent and wealthy avoid this fate upon their death. Abelard, you know this guy? Do I? I would tell you all about this man, but the words I'd use would be improper for a funeral. This, your lordship, is Jerry Candens, known back in the day as one of the most notorious pirates in the Coronas Expanse. A pirate funeral? This just got a hundred times more interesting. And would certainly explain the rough and tumble attendees. They nicknamed him Jerry Can for his habit of having a jug or two of Promethium on hand. He did love burning things. Oh yes, he was a menace back then. How long ago was it? Sixty years ago? I was serving my last days in the Navy when news came out of his last attack. How old are you? Abelard distractedly runs a hand through his hair. Well, well, there was a time when the sight of Jerry Can in a coffin would have been enough to make me dance. Quite literally. By the throne, I would have danced a jig on the spot. But now, I don't know. No more jumping into the warp right from under the cruiser's nose, eh, you old beast? Who would have thought I'd be at your funeral? This seems awfully elaborate for a pirate's funeral. Is this normal? Folks in footfall are known to turn a blind eye to many things, but even the locals aren't so unscrupulous as to honor pirate scum a few paces away from the Leech's residence. But no one has heard of Dens for so many decades. I barely recognized him myself, and I've seen his face on pics a fair few times back then. I assume he retired and started a more or less honest life under a new name. What was it they were calling him? Master Bellardo? Now I remember. Reverend Hieronymus mentioned the name Master Bellardo as one of the biggest donors to the temple. Right, right, yeah, that, that certainly tracks. The word repentance could have some connection to the Fidelio mystery. Among the words of parting and praise for the deceased, a fresh entry stands out. Repentance with a signature underneath. Fid. The letters are crabbed and barely legible. Interesting. So that would imply that this mysterious Fidelio was already here. 
but not in a way that any of these other people would know. None shall stand in my way. Uh, hi there. Girl. The girl, dressed in expensive clothes, raises her sad little face to you and says in a serious voice, Hello. Who are you? What are you doing all the way over here? Hiding? She hesitates for a moment. I thought I was going to cry, and I didn't want anyone to see. I... My name's Adelia Bellardo. It's my grandpa in there, in the box. Argenta's face softens. She reaches out and gently strokes Adelia's head. The tears will pass, Adelia. The tears will pass. The strength will return. And your courage will never leave you. Adelia tries to smile, then just nods seriously. Where are your parents? My dad is Cass Bellardo. He's with the guests. And my mom ran away. They told me she hates dad and grandpa. I guess she hates me too. I don't know. It was a long time ago. I don't even miss her anymore. I miss grandpa. He was the nicest. She presses her lips together and lets out a quiet, very unchildlike sigh. Have you uh, ever heard of someone named Fidelio? It's someone my dad is very mad at, but dad is always mad at everyone. At Grandpa, Mom, Dagon, Chaplin? Well, that does not bode well for us, because everyone thinks that we are Fidelio. Did your grandfather ever mention the word repentance to you? He did. That word kept appearing in our house, and nobody knew who wrote it. It used to make Grandpa happy when I was little. He always smiled when he saw it. But then later, when I was a little bigger and Grandpa was already old, it stopped making him happy. He was sad. He would just sit there and stare at nothing. And after that, when he got sick, she stops, her big eyes glistening with tears. When he got sick, the writing started to scare him. More and more of it appeared. Repentance, repentance, repentance. Even in his bedroom. One time he pointed at that word and said something. Something very weird about dead eyes. And about cobras going to class. I'm sorry, what? Abelard, who is looking at her with sympathy, narrows his eyes. What did you say? Cobra's going to class. Are you sure this is what your grandfather said? Of course I'm sure. When Grandpa was ill, I sat with him, and this one time he just started talking about cobras. It was sad, but it was also a little funny. Cobra, get to class, he said. Hmm. Abelard strokes his beard. Perhaps this is the old Navy officer in me talking, but I am almost certain he wasn't talking about a snake, but a Cobra-class frigate. Cobra going to class, you see? Hmm, maybe? Hey, uh, someone actually wrote Repentance in the Book of Remembrance over there and signed it Fidelio. That wasn't you, was it? Ha! Huh. That would have been a funny prank. Her eyes light up a little. But I, I don't play pranks. It, it was someone else. Maybe Fidelio did it, very quietly? Or maybe it was someone who's not on the list, but also someone nobody would suspect? Yeah, yeah, the idea that Fidelio's here incognito does seem pretty likely. Ah, the chaplain. Up close, chaplain leaves an even stronger impression. A tall, burly man whose face and hands bear numerous scars. His entire visage seems to tell the story of many heretics who met their end upon their encounter with this adept of true faith. 
Chaplin gives you a friendly nod, but his gaze is intense, like he's trying to get a sense of who you are. Pleasure to meet you, Master Fidelio. I prefer to go by Chaplin. It is both my name and my occupation. Chaplin Chaplin, they call me. Sometimes they call me Charlie, but I don't know why. You know, it's funny how, despite being Denz's, that is to say, Master Bellardo's closest associate and confessor, I've never heard of you, the man he chose to be his sole heir. I'm glad, of course, that the inheritance didn't go to any of the others, the vultures. But I'm still curious. Why you? Oh, uh, you know, we were, uh, we were very, very close. Chaplin nods. Unsurprising, Dens did like remarkable people, and he knew how to get people to like him. Yeah, you know, judging from the uh, speech you gave, sounds like you don't really care much for the rest of these folks. I'm a missionary, and the truth of the Imperium speaks through me, so I see no point in pretense. All who have gathered here have one goal to bite a chunk out of Denz's estate. Ambition and desperation of wealth are not immoral in and of themselves, but... Chaplin grimaces. It's just that I'm sickened by the thought that such a great man has left behind nothing but a pile of human refuse. His son is a drunk and a weakling. His friend, Dagon, the one who greeted you at the entrance, is a dim-witted brute with an incredibly bloated ego. His widow made off on the family yacht in the direction of the Maw, while his body was still warm, with an entourage of five brawny, good-looking young fellows. Oh my. Chaplin peers at you once more. I'd like to believe that he didn't choose you as his heir on a whim, Master Fidelio. At least you had the guts to come here into a nest of vipers who despise you, because Denz's money and property slipped through their fingers. I respect that kind of audacity. And so did he. I'm sorry, I, I've got to ask. How is it a guy like you, a member of the Ecclesiarchy, became friends with a pirate? Chaplin chuckles. The scars on his face grow even more prominent. Do you know why they call me Chaplin? Because it's your name? It's because I was the priest on Denz's ship in his wilder days. If you're surprised, you shouldn't be. There are plenty of heretic scum among the pirates of the Coronis. But Dens wasn't one of them. He was a true believer. And he shared more of the Imperium's ideals than some of these stiff-necked officers. A leader with an iron fist and an iron will. Don't we owe our conquest of thousands of star systems to people like that? And the ones he robbed were mostly types that no true Imperial would shed a tear over. Xenos, heretics. Not all of them, of course, but the Emperor will judge if Denz was a decent man. Right, sure. So, uh, how exactly does this whole inheritance thing work? When, when can I collect that? You just can't wait, can you? Chaplin scoffs. After the funeral, Denz will be delivered into the flames... Then we will announce his last will and testament, and you will officially come into your inheritance. I am starting to get the idea that this whole funeral is just one big trap for all of Denz's enemies in life. <laughs> but I guess we'll see how that goes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for speaking with me. I should probably get going. I mean, the, uh, the journal is implying that we might actually be able to net some inheritance here. I don't know if we will or if we... Oh! Um... It looks a lot like a deliberately set trap meant to collapse a part of the building. So, no one, uh, no one's alarmed by this? This thing that just happened? No? Just me? All right.
But yeah, that, that's likely the first of many attempts to kill me or other people here at the funeral. Maybe the inheritance is down below or something. Who knows? I'm sure it'll start coming together as we explore more of what's going on here. Who thought that was a good idea? I uh, didn't actually want you to drink that, Abelard, but you do you, I guess. I was really more hoping you'd tell me about it. As opposed to what? Poisoning yourself? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, look at that. He's now fatigued. That is rough on our melee specialist. And we've got a combat servitor tucked in the corner here. Plus a suspicious tech priest. And, of course, all these folks toting weapons pretty openly. This is definitely going to get messy, and now we've got a drunk enforcer on our side. <laughs> so that is, uh, that's good. I'm glad the last thing I did this episode was poison our frontline fighter. Hmm. Anyway, we are uh, past time, so I feel like this is a good place to call it. We'll hit the pause button for now, but we will definitely pick up here next time, because I am... Strangely fascinated by this mystery we seem to have stumbled our way into. And I am very keen to discover what comes next. See you then. Remember, although I do love playing Rogue Trader, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official websites. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description.